I'm counting down the five powerful spirit forms in Dan Dan. Did you know there's a character who has magical hair strong enough to flip cars and drill into aliens? Or have you seen a girl who can literally defy gravity with her majestic voice? Starting at rank 5, we have Rin, the super sweet class representative from Okarun's school. Remember when she unleashed all her power against the fairy tale of Kardioka? Let's recap what kind of power boost Rin got. Gravity control. When everyone was trapped in the board game, no thanks to the curse of the fairy tale card, Rin was able to use the spirit's power of gravity control through singing. The catch? She has to sing in bikini armor. But that concert helped all the players escape the cursed board game. Now the big question is, has Rin maxed out her potential, or will there be a power upgrade in the coming arcs? Now that Rin's part of the Dan 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 Hero Squad, we'll probably see even more crazy power-ups in the next battle. She might start throwing enemies around with high-pitched opera singing, or maybe she'll make Okarun fly to random spots with gravity control to create surprise attacks. What kind of power boost do you think will be shown after seeing her powerful bikini concert? Now let's figure out how exactly did Rin get a mix of Hatsune Miku's talent with Ochako Uraraka's powers. That power came with a spirit named Mai, who was a friend of Rin's. As a kid, Rin had a great voice and could have been a lead singer, but she gave up on that dream after her bestie Mai passed away. They both dreamed of being pop stars together. When the annoying ombudsman that lashed onto Rin was freed from her body, with a joint effort from the Hayashi band, Okarun, and Momo, it turned out that Mai was the spirit inside it. Now that she's free, Mai sticks by Rin's side as a guardian spirit, always looking out for her. Kind of like how Rika hangs out with Yuta. But here's a catch. If anything stops her from singing, her concert's over. If a bad dude steals her mouth, like what happened in the battle against Fairy Tail Card Yokai, her powers are totally gone. Now, if she had a second mouth like Sukuna, that'd be a different story. Have you ever wondered what hidden secret lies behind Anji's umbrella power? Well, here's a scoop. The secret of Anji's yokai powers actually lies with his brother. You see, Anji's little brother loved Umbrella so much, and he enjoyed playing with them. He was bullied for it, but Anji was always there to defend him. Anji had a super strong bond with his brother, which continued on a spiritual level after his brother passed away. How? Because his little brother drowned, trying to get his umbrella that fell into the river on a stormy day. In chapter 156, when the police officer and a kid were drowning in a river, Anji without a second thought rushed to save their lives. And that's when his little brother's spirit, who is now an umbrella yokai, granted him unbelievable powers, letting him use umbrellas to fly and rescue the people drowning. Since then, Anji can use his umbrellas to create defensive barriers or attack his opponents with shockwaves when he clicks it open. Sounds like Navia from Genshin Impact. Is Anji going to be an important character in the main story? Let's start from how he was introduced. During the Danmara arc, Momo and Okarun found out that it was Anji who got the other golden ball from Okarun's family jewels. Apparently, a certain someone told him that it was the only way he can use his powers if he wants to beat the board game. Do you remember what the board game's name was? Danmara. A crazy cursed board game that yanks you in the moment you touch it. So from an outsider's point of view, you become a mini board game piece standing on squares. But inside, you get transported into a fantastical world with boss fights, NPCs, and dragons. But here's the catch. This whole thing is run by a sneaky yokai called Fairy Tail Card, who has bad intentions. So what are the Fairy Tail Card's true intentions? The board game is actually a prison made for the Fairy Tail Card yokai. Let me explain. So in chapter 148, Turbo Granny said that the fairy tale card was originally trapped in a wicker trunk or suitcase, whatever you prefer to call it in your country, and four seals were put on it to keep him in there. But the fairy tale card pulled a big brain move to trick people into unsealing him by turning the entire box into a fantasy world board game with its skill, pocket dimension creation. The crazy truth that the players don't know is that there's actually no winning in Danmara. That's how he's tricking everyone. The fairy tale card turned the seals of his prison into bosses that the players must beat to get to the final task, which is to destroy the crystal in the middle of the castle in order to win the game. But what the players don't know is that if they beat the bosses and destroy the crystal, the crystal is actually the last seal keeping the fairy tale card yokai from escaping. And so Anji and Momo unknowingly set him free. Honestly, Jumanji was a better game. At least the players could win, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, jumping back to Anji's powers, as amazing as it is, the power comes with a big challenge. Because as we all know, with great power comes great limitation. You know what I'm saying? In chapter 140, Anji was not able to use his umbrella powers during the Nom Nom Bongo boss fight because he already used them up when he defeated the giant knight. He later explains to Momo that he can use this ability only twice at a time, so the timing of this power has to be during critical moments. 
But when Anji was possessed by the fairy tale cardio Kai, shockingly, he was able to use his umbrella attacks way more times than he should be able to. And Turbo Granny, being the OG she is, caught it in 4K and pointed out that Anji using his power too much would totally eventually nuke his body. The fairy tale cardio Kai, using Anji's flying abilities, escaped his prison and left everyone in the board game behind. It was only thanks to Rin that they floated out of the board game. Well, except for Momo because she ate the food from inside the game. And Turbo Granny surprisingly stayed to support her by making an excuse of saying that she's feeling lucky today and it might help or something like that. But even with the combined effort of Okarun, Momo, Rokuro Serpo, the policeman, and Rin, the fairy tale card yokai was still pretty unstoppable. Then suddenly, a new character appeared named Count Saint Germain, who definitely carries Gojo level powers and personality. Working together with Count Saint Germain's intelligence, Serpo, Okarun, and a drained but determined Anji defeated the fairy tale card yokai. But Saint Germain's one sneaky dude. In a later scene in chapter 163, he deceived and absorbed whatever power remained from the fairy tale yokai. Now I don't really know where he's from or what he's up to yet, and the manga's keeping it all hush hush, but Turbo Granny already referred to Count Saint Germain as a hyper geezer. What does she know about him? And wasn't he also the one who sets Anji up to get trapped in the cursed board game with the fairy tale yokai? Now, what if I told you that there's a spirit that's got the juice to bring a character back to the living world and make them superhuman? This girl in the manga got some crazy superpowers from the acrobatic silky spirit, like an extra gift. But who is she? Ranked third on this list is Aira Shiratori, another student from Okarun's school, and let me tell you, she's uh, head over heels for our boy, Okarun. But here's the thing, Aira's powers have a depressing story behind it. Ara gets her outrageous powers after meeting acrobatic Silky, a yokai with a sad past. Silky lost her kid and died from the pain of separation from her daughter. So what connection do Ida and Silky have? After becoming a yokai, Silky became a spirit who couldn't remember what she lost. When suddenly Ira, who was a little girl at that time, mistook Silky as her mother. But how could Ira have seen Silky? Here's my theory. After Ira's mother died when she was young, Ira probably became sensitive to spirits for a while. They were also both looking for someone they lost. Ira still expecting her mother to come back and Silky still looking for her daughter. But after the first time they met, Silky assumed that Ira was her daughter. From that point on, she waited for Ira to see her again for more than 10 years. Finally, Ira got Okarun's golden ball and she was now able to see Silky again. Silky then attempts to kidnap Ira, so happy that they can finally see each other. And when Okarun, Ira, and Momo try to fight back, Silky swallowed them all like a flurkin. And dang girl, how many people can you fit in that? But Momo too smart though. Momo found a way to hurt Silky from the inside and the yokai had to puke them all out. During the fight between Silky and Okarun and Momo, Ira actually dies. But here's a twist. Acrobatic Silky gives her her own aura to bring Ira back to life. So how strong is Ira now? The whole thing gave Ira a spirit form with wild yokai powers like one ninja hair. When she's in her monster mode, her hair grows super long and it's like Spider-Man's web. She can move around by throwing her hair, grab heavy stuff like cars, and even use it like a ninja drill to break through anything. It's like her very own Rasengan as well. Two, acrobat moves. Just like the yokai she got powers from, Ira could do cool flips, twists, back tucks crazy stunts and float like a feather with awesome flexibility. 3. Heavy kicks. She also has incredible leg strength which she often uses to kick her enemies 6 ways to Sunday. But she's got one weakness. If someone can stop her movement, she gets stuck and ends up taking some serious hits. Just like what happened in the fight with those creepy music room portraits. Speaking of weaknesses, how often do you see a total geek with zero social life flip into a giga chat overnight? All thanks to an epic power up? I guess a lot in Isekai's, but that is Okarun aka Ken Takakura. The main dude in the manga, he's kinda a drag with no friends, but then BAM! He gets powers from Turbo Granny who just loves to curse. And how did that happen? Well, Okarun went into the spirit tunnel just to challenge Momo that spirits don't exist, but to a surprise, uh, they did. Yeah, they did. And Turbo Granny showed up and took away his wiener. But how powerful is he right now? Bro, he's so OP. First of all, he's got hyper speed. Okarun can boost himself to catch up to anything in his sight with a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. The bro can be athletes in races for fun, right? Like when him and Momo are cornered by earthbound spirits in crab form and other spirits from the graveyard, Okarun takes Momo on his back and runs past him like a bullet. 
Second, his bite is crazy powerful, which is a great asset in close range battles against any opponent. Not only can he kick and punch, he can bite his enemy's head off. In Chapter 3, when they face a Flatwoods monster, Okoran swiftly bites off the monster's fingers using his hyperspeed and his big jaws in a combo attack. Third, his defenses have gotten so strong, like he could take on any attacks and tank them with minimal damage. Okoran even takes on direct attacks from the Flatwoods monster, but his spirit power is strong enough that he just brushes them off. Now, I don't know if you notice this, but doesn't Okarun remind you of another powerful character in a different manga? Ken, a high school nerd which makes him quite similar to Kageyama from Mob Psycho 100. How? 1. Kageyama and Ken are both introverts and don't mingle with anyone easily. And they are very, very scared of talking to girls. They're basically invisible in school. Their personalities flip to monsters when their powers are activated. They both struggle to control their powers, especially Okarun, and they train their bodies hard with workouts to boost their strength and stamina. But here's a separate question. I've been thinking, why is Turbo Granny so bitter from the start? And why is she stealing people's wieners and balls in the first place? Here's a theory. The sorrow from the spirits and the girls with tragic deaths took a toll on Granny. The regular exposure to grief would have made her help out on anyone, especially towards guys. Why only guys? Because the girls who died in the tunnel were mostly killed by sadistic men, the scum of the earth. This made Granny curse and steal the balls of the guys who came in to challenge her. Let's talk about Okarun's limitations. The transformation has a timer. He has to do monster mode in a small window of time. Okarun must carefully choose his granny power activation time, especially if he's fighting a boss enemy. It would be big trouble if he gets into normal mode during boss fights. Plus, when he uses full power twice, he turns back into an ordinary schoolboy, and that isn't going to save him from any villains. And the worst thing to notice is that our boy has no healing power ability. So if a heavy attack is coming, he has to move aside or he gets knocked out. From party vibes to unstoppable cold monster. In our top rank is Gigi. He's usually the coolest and most energetic guy in the room, a total chatterbox, and never shies away from complimenting girls. But when he goes spirit mode, bam, he turns into a monstrous powerhouse. Now here's the thing, Gigi only started to see spirits when he and his parents moved into the house owned by the Kito family. This led him to getting superpowers from the devilish spirit, Evil Eye. And this boost made him so OP that he has the power to beat all other yokais we've seen so far. But why is Evil Eye such a pain in the AS? Cause after he gains control of Gigi's body, he turns very violent and wants to kill all humans. Feels a little familiar, right? I mean, a villain who wants to wipe out all of humanity just to get revenge. So what is the origin of Evil Eye? And why does he hate everybody? He was originally just a young boy, capped by the Kito family as a sacrifice for their ridiculous superstitions. These guys were monsters. They also burned him alive. After that, he became a vengeful spirit filled with pain and rage. And it only got worse when he saw others being sacrificed in the same cruel way. It's no wonder he's so full of hate. Now what happens to Gigi every time Evil Eye takes over? When Evil Eye takes control, Gigi's personality is nowhere to be seen, as if he no longer exists. His free will and jolly nature, uh, completely gone. And it does put everyone around him in danger, because Evil Eye attacks anyone in sight. But let's decode what power-ups this yokai unlocked for Gigi. To keep the evil eye under control, Gigi had to train really hard with Seiko, the super tough and gorgeous granny who doesn't even look like a granny. After training, Gigi learned how to control his ki. With that power, he unlocked two strong moves. The first one, the Ha Wave, a burst of ki energy that he improved and strengthened to even knock away alien enemies he was fighting. The second one is the Evil Gun, which shoots out an energy beam that is strong enough to penetrate even alien armor. The second power up is beast mode. Whenever Gigi is hit with cold water, he turns into the evil eye and starts wreaking havoc. But this transformation can be controlled or flipped, thank goodness, by throwing hot water in Gigi. But why does cold and hot water affect Gigi so much? So, in Japanese culture, hot water is associated with purification and shielding against harmful spirits, or keeping negative aura away. Also, in Japanese folklore, Fire and heat are often used to block and fight yokai. So we know now how hot water keeps evil eyes suppressed inside Gigi. Now, every one of these spirit forms has cool powers and backstories, but the question is, how do they compare to the actual spirits and yokai from old Japanese legends? I wonder which other Japanese lore and legends about actual spirits and yokai are incorporated in Dandadan.